This is the Egg Rider V2 by Egg Bikes. It's a minimalist display for electric bikes and it comes with a phone app for iOS and Android which connects to the display via Bluetooth. Physically, installation was a case of unplugging the old display and plugging in the Egg Rider. A two minute job involving a few zap ties. Activation of the display is via the app and your phone's email client. It took 30 minutes to get a cut and paste code from George at Egg Bikes in the UK. It's quite a bit more compact than the original display that I had. Um, the buttons are really easy to reach and it looks pretty cool on the bike. I'm still keeping this uh, power cutoff button for the moment and maybe I'll turn it into a horn button or something, stick a big, big loud fog horn on there or something. The buttons are okay to use. Um, they could be a little more tactile, but they're they're decent enough, and you can use them to shift up and down the pedal assist levels. And this one here changes between road and off road, and then there's a little power button there at the top um, that you click to shut down, and then you click it again to start it up. And I must say, like the boot up time is super quick, much quicker than the display that I had and there's no error, there's no um, code entry either. Unfortunately because of the refresh rate on this screen, at least I think that's what this is causing, it's quite difficult to show you exactly what's on here but you've got uh, the voltage at the top and a battery percentage and you have the mode like road or off-road because uh, you have two lots of different settings for programming the motor uh, and then it's got kilometers per hour and then the pedal assist level the range apparently and then you can either have watts or amps and then it'll give you oh, what's the bit at the bottom um, oh how, how far you've been like an odometer so I've ridden this for about 180 kilometers now actually the biggest problem I noticed with the display is when it's sunny and I wear my sunglasses of course and unfortunately then you can't see the display. Uh, I don't know if that's because of the uh, the polarizing stuff on my sunglasses or the type of display that's used, um, but unfortunately, you can't really see it with any reliability when it's sunny with sunglasses on. I've tried rotating the angle of display to see if that makes any difference. Um, fortunately, it does a little bit, but it takes the buttons out of easy reach and you've got the power assist or pedal assist buttons here um, and it's nice to have those in a fairly central position. So a further update on the screen, it seems to be only in bright sunshine that we have the issue with the refresh rate of the screen because it's displaying everything perfectly here. We have 58.1 uh, volts, we have 95% battery, it's in the road mode, we have kilometers per hour for the speed, Pedal assist level three. Apparently, there's 35 kilometers of range. Uh, the secondary uh, reading I've got here is in watts at the moment, and I've done 203 kilometers at the moment. When connected and running, the app acts as a larger display. It shows all the details the bike mounted display provides voltage battery percentage, speed, power in watts or amps if you prefer, distance, running time, assist level, road or off-road mode, and the added extra on this screen is efficiency in watt hours. If you leave the app connected while you ride, you can access a ride summary screen. This gets you the average moving speed, max speed, max power in watts, and an efficiency average in watt hours per kilometer. You can also view a distance and time graph which is showing voltage, current, speed and battery percentage. Accessing the motor programming pages via the app is very quick and easy. There are three pages of information, Bafang Basic, Bafang Pedal and Bafang Throttle. So far, all I've changed is the limited current from 27 amps to 30 amps. For whatever reason, the motor supplier had set the amps to 27. 
Once settings have been changed, pressing right programs the controller and you get a confirmation message. Pressing road and off-road allows you to have two different running profiles for the motor. For example, restricting the road mode to say 17 amps. I need to learn more about the motor parameters before I decide to change anything else here. The stock settings provided by EM3 EV are pretty good as they are. I like it for what it does with the motor programming and the phone app. I really like the minimal design, uh, the way it cleans up the bars of the bike. I think it shows massive potential to be easily one of the best displays on the market. I'd love to see uh, like a version 3 of this and take see them take what they've learned and see how they improve it. It sounds like they are trying to improve the app all the time, uh, making firmware updates to the display reasonably regularly and that's pretty exciting to see. Overall, yeah, I think it's really great. Uh, the ability to make changes on the fly to both the display and to the motor controller settings is really powerful. Multiple power modes um, could get you out of trouble if you have to demonstrate, for example, that the power on the bike is actually restricted to 750 watts or whatever the, the chicken poop limit is in the area that you're riding. I would make sure that you are comfortable with either the small display or having your phone sort of attached to your bike while you're riding. Uh, if neither of those two options appeal to you, then it might not be the best display for your bike. That being said, personally I do like the fact that you haven't got a giant display on the bike and that it looks quite minimalist.